Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to episode 7 of Notice Board. And today we have something exciting for you to talk about. Well, first of all, what are companies doing about the coronavirus? Yours truly was badly affected by it because I was supposed to travel to Adobe Summit at the end of the month. But you know what? That has been called off like many other conferences. They've all sort of moved it either online only or have delayed it. And I don't know what's going to happen. But one of the things that struck me was think about the impact it is going to have, not just on the travel industry and the hotels and hospitality, the car companies, the food and beverage companies, the number of companies which depend on these conferences. But more than that, think about the way it has impacted the supply chain of the biggest corporations in the world. Apple has said that, you know, they are warning that it might get its uh, some kind of an impact on its profitability. And so have many other companies. So think about this as a terrific example of what the leaders need to do today. In a connected world, well, there are lots of advantages, but what it also means is, you know, when something like this happens, it impacts everybody and nobody is very safe. And this week I got a chance to travel to IIM Lucknow. And of course, yes, I did enjoy myself with all the goodies that Lucknow has to offer. But what I want to talk to you about is my little conversation with a young entrepreneur uh, called Amit Bagaria. He runs an e-commerce company called SimSim. And he was talking to me about the importance of being able to create your brand through TikTok. One of the beauty of TikTok is the fact that all content there uh, is of the short video content type, right? Everything is less than one minute, which means that the user is not bombarded with extremely long content where they have to give too much of their attention span to what's happening on the mobile phone. Um, and with lower attention spans as well, you could capture the consumer's attention fairly well. Um, and because of the format and the way the content is delivered to the end consumer, it's not just B2C, but even B2B company. Let's say a, there's a company which is um, creating interesting data flows or data um, uh, representations uh, and they want to sell this uh, idea to existing companies. It's a typical B2B um, SaaS business model. Uh, now they could create very interesting TikTok videos around the data representations, put it up um, and then target the right individuals as well, right? Because I'm also on TikTok. I would also want to have the service of this uh, data company. Um, and if a content just catches my eye in terms of what's happening on it and how data is being presented on TikTok as form of, as as in the form of a one minute one minute video, um, I might also reach out to this company and say, you know, why not we don't why not we talk and figure out how can we work together. I just received my copy of HR Katha, the printed version of it, and I was delighted to see. Guess what? This is notice board featured prominently in the back cover but you know one of the articles i really liked and i would love to seek your uh, views on it and say that what would you rather be a big fish in a small pond or a small fish in a big pond what is a big advantage and is it a good idea to start with a large corporation where you can you know flow through many different teams with a structured uh, development program or should you actually work with a startup where you get to do pretty much anything and everything it's a little chaotic what really develops you further? Love to have your point of view. Write into us at editorial at hrkatha.com. And of course, I have a great recommendation for you. Uh, the book that I'm talking about is written by one of the HR leaders of the industry, Bimal Rath, and the name of the book is The Middle Model. This is aimed at really all the middle managers in an organization, which he defines as people who have anywhere between 10 and 20 years of experience. That's really the age group that it's directed towards. But I also thought that there were things that people older or younger could also benefit from. One of the key takeaways that I found in the book was that he talks about the importance of finding a coach and investing in a coach, personal coach, even if it means paying for it yourself. Most organizations which invest in coaching actually do it for a handful of senior leaders or maybe even their uh, top performers. But then it doesn't cover any, anyone and everyone. So the recommendation is, especially if you're in the middle management, it's a great time for you to invest in coaching and really seek the help of somebody who can tell you how do you balance all those contradictions that you come across in your life right at this particular stage. At the age of 24, Jack Welch joined GE and he, um, at that point of time, it was the year 1960. In 1980, he took over at the head of GE 
and uh, that's a position that he sort of led for many, many years, over two decades. At the turn of the century, he stepped down. And during this time, during this time, GE's profitability shot through the roof. It became the largest behemoth. So if you think today of Amazon and Apple and Microsoft, GE was all of that combined. And the credit certainly goes to Jack Welch. People, you know, a number of the people uh, look at GE as a leadership factory. You know, people who did not make it to the top job, uh, the second and the third rung people also actually landed up getting great jobs everywhere else. Uh, that is something that a company should really take great pride in. And of course, there are critics like everybody else. Um, one of the things people talk about is this really larger than life scenario, uh, very focused on self, narcissistic. A lot of people question the fact that he over-invested in the financial sector. 80% of the things that he bought and acquired, the companies for financial services, you know, all of them really, people say, weakened and hollowed out GE. And eventually these were businesses, many of these businesses GE had to exit. And of course, one of the questions that I seem to agree with a lot, would that style really work in today's day and age? And the question really perhaps is that uh, today, the leader really needs to do two things. One is draw less attention to himself. So really the model of leadership that I would vote for is closer to what Tim Cook does for Apple or Satya Nadella or for that matter, Reed Hastings. Very understated and not so, you know, uh, in your face kind of a thing, a style. Probably that intimidates a lot of the people. So while you could say Jack Welch encouraged debate and all of that, but it was very true that he would bulldoze his way through. One last thing that I think I'm gonna leave you with. During his tenure, Jack Welch gave the return of 5,200%, an approximate more than 21% uh, per annum when you look at it in terms of the returns. So he delighted shareholders, but he knocked off a lot of people. So the question that I would have for you is, he had this habit of, also knocking off people, laying off people, even when the company was profitable. Perhaps instead of that 5,200%, it could have done a little less and it could have still kept a lot more people employed. Would that have been the right thing to do? What do you think? And that's all that we have time for in this edition of Notice Board. Don't forget to tune in once again next week. And in the meanwhile, stay safe from coronavirus. And a parting thought that I have for you is, you know, at one point of time, Reed Hastings, the CEO of Netflix said, his greatest competition actually comes from sleep because when people sleep, they don't watch Netflix. That's what I suppose he had in mind. But I also think that this time when he, somebody asked him this question, what's your greatest ally? I think he should say coronavirus because that encourages people to stay at home and watch Netflix. Till the next time, goodbye. Thank <music> you.